Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and today we have a good topic to discuss. As you see the title says why free African men respected Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago. And yes it's true they respected him a lot. You know sometime uh, when you read Islamic stories, you wonder, I mean, those stories coming from where exactly? Are they true? Are they fictions? Are they smart? Are they stupid? Well, you decide. But for sure, those stories are very helpful for us to understand the nature of this cult. According to the story that Muhammad, he decided to go one day somewhere and he took with him one of the companion, his name is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And then when they are walking, Muhammad said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, stop here, stop here. And he drew for him a circle. And he told him, if you stay inside the circle, you will be fine. If you leave it, you will be dead. You can try that, especially if like uh, somebody want to kill you or police want to chase you or just put a circle around you and then you will be safe. Now this belief is very ancient coming from the Yazidi. You know the Yazidi, the one you heard about them that uh, ISIS, they kidnapped their daughters and they raped them and they killed m most of the men. Those Yazidi, they believe that if you draw a circle around you, then you are protected from the anger of Satan, or let us say the power of Satan. So Muhammad obviously, he believed in the same thing. And this is the impact of the Sabian. If you draw a circle, that will create a certain power around you, and that power prevent the power of genies as Muhammad believe in genie. Now some Christians who do not know anything about Islam, they think that when Muslims they say genie, they are talking about demon. Uh, I saw some you know, Christians who even claim to be priests, but obviously they have no idea what they are talking about. In Islam there is no demon. Genie is not a demon. Demon is a spirit. Genie is not. Just make it clear for yourself. Genie is called genie because supposedly he is invisible. He is invisible, but doesn't mean he don't have body. Even Muhammad, he claimed that they eat poo, -poo. sorry, they eat bones. Uh, and that story mentioned when he was trying to clean his poo, -poo from his from his anus. Uh, his companion, he grabbed him some bones and he said to him, don't do that because this is the food of the, uh, the food of the genie. And we can show you the reference. And according to Muhammad, that uh, the genie, they have a gift from Allah. When you see a bone, you see a bone. There's no meat in it. But when a genie, he see a bone, Allah, he covered the bone by meat. So genies are creatures who they eat meat. All right? So don't mix things between genie and demon. Demon are not creatures who eat anything. All right? 
uh, actually I can uh, let us see if I can find you and the genie they eat with their uh, they eat with the right, left hand that's why Muslims are forbidden to use their left hand to eat let us see Yeah. Let us see if we can find this hadith in English. Now, maybe some of you are wondering what this have to do with the African. We will be there. Just have a patient. Here, this is the story of Muhammad. This is in Al Bukhari, and he was cleaning his bomb. And you know the Muslim, they have to report everything about Muhammad, including his anus. This is this is simply an anus story. A man did poo poo, and now they are reporting us what happened during the poo poo time. Very fantastic religion. So once he was in the company of the Prophet, who Abu Huraira. Huraira is a name given to him because he liked too much cats, so they call him the father of cats. So once he went with Muhammad, and uh, you know he, you know he, he carried for him some water, etc. Blah blah blah, and then uh, you know he got he got some you know he want to do you know poo poo. So he told him bring me something to clean myself with it, and then he said to him when he brought him some stuff he said what who is this he said. I am Abu Huraira, and the Prophet said, bring me stones in order to clean my private part, and do not bring me any bones or animals, donk. Abu Huraira went, he continued speaking, so I brought him some stones, you know, and he did, etc. And then uh, Muhammad, uh, he explained to him, he says, uh, he said to him, uh, the man, he said to Muhammad, look, what's, what's wrong with uh, with bones and dunk? Why you don't clean your anus with it? So he said, they are, uh, what about the bones and the animals, dunk? He said, which means Muhammad, they are the food of the jinn, the delicate of the jinn of the city of Nasabin. And here I want you to take a note about this. Let me zoom in. Sorry, I, I have it too much far. The city of Nasabin is a city in north of Syria. This is where the Yazidi and this is where the Sabian are. And here you see the connection between Muhammad and his fiction stories. So in the city of Nasabin, they came to me. And uh, how nice those genie were and asked me for uh, uh, the remains of the human food. I invoke Allah for them that they would never pass by bone or animal dunk but find food on them. So what Muhammad is saying that he met some of the genie who they are coming from the city of Nasabin which they are supposedly uh, you know Sabian but they are genie they are not those are not a human and they eat bones and they eat poopoo but dry poopoo so he Muhammad because they were nice to him uh, he invoked Allah that never touch a bone and they will not find in it some meat wonderful so now we have a connection that we have here the city of Nasabin now we go back to the story of the African So Muhammad, when he told his friend, stay inside the circle in order to live, which means leaving the circle, you will be, you will be dead. Something very bad will happen to you. But Muhammad himself, he keep walking. So the man now is inside the circle, the companion of Muhammad, He's inside the circle, standing in the middle, but Muhammad, as a, you know, 
we have a special protection Muhammad you know so he decide and he keep walking and here is the surprise when Muhammad keep to walking the, the, the uh, a bunch of African a bunch of African who they are very black and they are tall and they are naked they came to Muhammad Now you might ask yourself what they did to Muhammad, how they spoke to Muhammad, how they greeted Muhammad, they said to him Assalamu Alaikum, because the title says why free African men respected Muhammad highly, right? The surprise is that those African they start riding Muhammad as a donkey. One after one jump on the back of Muhammad and they start riding his back. And they keep riding him all day long until Muhammad gets so tired he cannot even breathe and here when, when we look at this story that is a bunch of African who they are naked and where they are in the desert of Saudi Arabia and where they are close to Mecca and where in the middle of nowhere and where is that a jungle is that like I mean why those people are even there so they are totally black they are very tall they are totally naked and uh, Muhammad is describing the azot azot is very black color like very dark color and then instead of saying assalamu alaikum or instead saying to him praise be to the prophet Muhammad or saying to him uh, oh Muhammad you are here let us uh, give you a hug they start riding him like a donkey one after one and they keep doing that all day long and the guy supposedly the one in the circle which we explained to you he is watching from far distance he cannot go out of the circle remember because if he, he, he go out you know something bad will happen to him and maybe now he understand what will happen they will ride him too you know so the guy who is watching this supposedly or reporting this he is speaking how horrible it is how bad it is and how the those black people they rode Muhammad in his back treated him like a donkey and they were very aggressive actually I'm going to show you the story because you know the Muslim they will say uh, gang bang no no we are not talking about this we are talking riding him riding in his back we don't know I mean this you see I cannot add words it's not there it says they did ride him all right we don't know if it is sexual yeah, we don't know we have no idea you know we have to go by the text as it is I cannot add my own so this is the story and this is, can be found in the book of Musnad Ahmad but in here in this book I'm showing you from the book of Majma'u Zawaid wa Manba'u Fawaid but you can find the original story in the book of Musnad Ahmad, which is a higher book for sure. Uh, but here, because we have the page number, etc., uh, we can find it in the other, you know, in the original book too. So it says here uh, that Abdullah al Mas'ud he said, and this is the hadith number 13959. Actually, you know what? Let me, <coughs> let me pause for you first the link. And you can use Google Translation from your site or whatever language you speak, you know. Uh, and we can use Google Translation. Let us do that in front of your eyes. So, Abdullah ibn Masoud said. That the messenger of Allah, Allah pray on him and salute him. This is the only prophet who is God pray on him and he salute him. It's not him who pray to God and salute God. No, it's God who pray on him and salute him. Mm -hmm. Like Muhammad is the surgeon and uh, uh, so uh, and Allah is the private, he is the soldier. So uh, he asked <laughs> he asked him to walk with him and he said, stay behind me. Okay. And then when they arrived to a such and such a place, we don't know where, 
this is what he said, such and such. Uh, then the message of Allah, Allah pray on him, salute him. Uh, he drew a line. He drew a line. Let me show you the circle. And he said to him, the translation is not too much accurate. He said to him, stay between them. Stay between those lines. Don't leave. Because if you do, you will perish. You will be killed. Maybe you will be burned. We don't know. So he said, so I was in it. So the, the guy, he followed the, the instruction of Muhammad, and he sat inside this circle. And then he said, uh, a bunch of men, they came and they were like Zot, which is very black color. You know, yeah, they, are, they were Zot. They, they are not like, they are very, very black in color. So they are like men, but they are very black in color. And then the story here continue saying, uh, and Afan he reported, and they were uh, not wearing any clothing. So they were totally naked. All right? And I did not see their private parts. I'm not sure why he did not see private parts, but they are naked. Maybe he did not look. And then he said, they come and they start riding the messenger of Allah. They start riding him. Now we do not know how this riding happened, like they put him down in the floor and they sit on the top of him. You know, we don't want to go sexual, but it doesn't sound right. You see? But this is what it says, you know, we are just reading exactly what is there. So they start riding him, and then they keep riding him all day long. Until he have a lot of pain. And here I wonder the pain is from what? Is that because they were raving him? Is that because, you know, his bones, his muscles, he get tired? It doesn't say really anything. So we cannot, you know, we cannot add, we cannot, you can guess, right? So they start riding him, and uh, let us see in translation here. Yeah, the translation is really <laughs> messed up, but if we go to the Arabic, it says here, جاء ثقيلا وجعا أو يكاد أن يكون وجعا أو وجعا مما ركبوا. so he came and he's so heavy like hardly he can walk with a lot of pain or he have pain. and then محمد he says إني أجدني ثقيلا I cannot move. you know like like he's almost dead. so The person who's reporting the story is reporting a very horrible event to the point even himself he says I was terrified I was terrified from them now you know like when you know many years ago when I asked a Muslim about this story he said, well, there's nothing sexual there. Even though I did not say to him anything about sex, but here right away, because the word in, in Arabic, in the street, street language, if you say markub, that's mean he is a homo, and men, they jump on him. If you are speaking about uh, a male, if you are speaking about a female, obviously they are having sex with her. Uh, but this is a prophet of God, and this prophet of God is it treated like, and let us say there's no sexual thing happened. It was only uh, a bunch of men who they are so black, they were riding him. If you ask the Muslims, they say to you, first of all, those are not normal human. Okay, what they are? He say they are genie. They are what? They are genie. Okay, no problem. 
I don't know if there's any Muslim in the chat. I'm sure there's many. If there's any Muslim can help us, why the genie they were riding Muhammad as a donkey? Any Muslim can help us? You see, we are going with you, with your own definition and explanation, and you try your best. No problem. Why the, the why those black men, who they are supposedly genie, not African, and funny they are coming from Nusabin, which is a city who have no black people there. I mean, and why they are black? Any Muslim can help us. Any Muslim in the chat, <clears throat> he can have an answer. The Muslims, they claim uh, that Muhammad is a messenger for both mankind and genie. Okay. Who is a Muslim here? He agree with this. Who is a Muslim agreeing that Muhammad is a messenger for mankind and genie? Anyone? It's very funny that Muslims they always have answers, but simple answer, some simple question like this, you know, is, is making Islam in trouble. If I am a messenger sent by God to the genie, why the genie are going to ride in the back of this messenger? Anyone? If you remember, I don't know if, you know, some of you maybe remember, there is a hadith where Muhammad, he said, that not a single genie do not know that I'm a messenger of Allah. Not a single messenger, he do not know that I am, all of them they knew. Let me see if I can find the hadith. Well, maybe we cannot find it in this uh, uh, in the English translation. Let us see in different place. All right. <clears throat> this is Musnad Imam Ahmad, very important person in the in Islam. Value number three, page number three, one, zero. And Muhammad, he says, that there is no one between earth and heaven, yet he do not know that I am the messenger of Allah, except the bad genie and the bad human. Okay. Let us see what that will lead us to. There is nothing between the heaven and the earth but know that I am the messenger of Allah except the disobeying genie and the disobeying human. So Muhammad is confirming that the one who don't accept him as a messenger of Allah between the men, the human, and the genie are the disobeying one. That's wonderful. So those who did ride Muhammad back, those are not good genie even though they look African and here actually the question is why always something 
is not good, he come to Muhammad as black. The one who will destroy the Kaaba is a black person, he's an Ethiopian. The one uh, who most Allah he hate is a black person, you know. And we showed you those reference over and over, you know, thousands of times. Uh, Let us see here. So always Muhammad, he insists to make anything is not good. Any creature, any human, animals, doesn't matter, anything is black, have to be for him evil. The one who will destroy the Kaaba is an Ethiopian man, he is a black person, as you see. And why he will destroy it, and he's making fun of his look as an, as, as an African person. And now Muhammad is speaking about that he suffered badly because of a bunch of African, but those are African genie. They are African genie. They look like a human, but they are African genie. Okay. Those African genies, who they are horribly treated Muhammad, they did write the Prophet all day long. Now going back to the story, remember it is Muhammad who brought the guy and he told him stay inside the circle and don't get out. Because if you get out, you will perish. Wonderful. It is Muhammad who asked the guy to stay in that distance and he is the one who brought, with, brought him with him. And it's Muhammad who knew what is going to happen to him, that a bunch of genie are going to ride him because as you see, he knew what's going to happen. That's why he told the man, don't follow me, stay inside that circle. Then the question is, why Muhammad he did such a thing? As long as he knew that they will ride him, they knew, he knew they will humiliate him, he knew that they will treat him badly. And we are not talking about something sexual now. We are talking about just treating him as a donkey. Okay, I'm a prophet of God and I'm coming to you. Okay, now the genie, they welcome me by doing what? By jumping over my, 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 my back. And they did that. They did that to me all day long. Muslims, what is the, what we learn from this story? Do we have any Muslim want to help us? What we learn from this story? You know, the Muslim, they say that the reason Jesus was not crucified because Allah will not let his prophet to be humiliated by, uh, by uh, people. Okay. But have you ever heard of such humiliation in such a way? I mean, those are not even human. Riding your prophet? Now, you know, most of them, they will come to you with a different answer. Brother and sister, this hadith is weak. No, it's not weak. So shut up and get lost. Actually, it says that all the men of this hadith are very trustworthy, except one. But many reported it, and it is sahih. The men in this hadith are thiqat. Warawahu turmudi bihtisar. Rawahu Ahmed. Warijaluhu rijalu sahih. Alright? Because we knew what, what the end will be always. Anything they don't like. Anything they don't like. Anything is making Muhammad look bad. Right away they will say it is not sahih immediately 
So why now is not going to be Sahih? Because now people they get more educated. People now they find that a story. Those stories is really stupid, and they find it it's a very insulting. But at that time, supposedly this is Muhammad having a new experiment. He's a special person. He have a special communication with the genie. How he communicate with them? They ride him. The genie they saw Muhammad. They said to him, "You are cool." And they ride his back like a donkey. So, I don't know what the Muslim will say to us about this, but I find it very embarrassing. And you know the funny, the Muslim, they say, uh, uh, it's, uh, people, they are insulting the Prophet. There's nobody insulting the Prophet more than you Muslims insulting your Prophet. And there's nobody insulting the Prophet more than Muhammad insulting himself. Imagine I go to people and say, oh, I, I, I came and I saw a bunch of black people and looked what they did to me. Okay, what did it to you? <laughs> and then I tell them what Muhammad said. That they were riding him like a donkey. Now Muslims, after those African did ride <laughs> Muhammad, sorry, like a donkey. And what is next? I mean, why Allah you want this to happen to his prophet? Like, what exactly? What happened? <clears throat> Any Muslim? Uh, let me let me show you. <clears throat> we have a person. He's a Muslim. He's saying this to me. You see, we welcome Muslims to make comment, but just to show you how Muslims get angry for reading their books. Look at this. CP is a devil, bastard. By the way, the word bastard doesn't fit for me because I wasn't born four years after my father's death like your prophet. So you need to question that. It's your books. Have you ever heard of somebody who was born four years after his father's death? Eh, I'm sure you will find a reason. He's a prophet. Allah has taken more time to make him <laughs> with more screws. So liar, Islam, <laughs> Islam hater. Look, I'm showing them the reference. I'm giving the link. This is their Islamic books. And then they will answer me an answer of a donkey. Liar. Can you believe it? Another Abdul saying to me, repent. You do you Muslim repent? Okay, I'm not going to repent. Why? I go kiss the black stone, it erase my sin. I find it very funny when the Muslims they say those things like repent, pray. You pray for what? Isn't it Allah? He says you pray, you don't pray. I'm going to. It's a destiny. It's fate. Islam is the most stupid religion. Muslims they use words doesn't fit in their religion. The word of prayer is a stupid to say and stupid to do because at the end of the day it's what Allah wrote for you before you are born. So why you pray? Why you do Hajj? Why you do even jihad? Why you even you convert? It's what Allah He wrote for you. So don't use those words because they don't fit with you. You are a thief. You steal the words, you use them, you put them in your dictionary, but they mean nothing in your cult. And look, I'm showing them the reference and all of what they say to me, liar, repent. I want, I want an answer. I will repent later. I want to know what we learn from this story that your prophet been victim of a bunch of an African and they were riding him horribly all day long. You can't tell me repent later. Can you save it for after the answer? Can you? Muhammad, he came to us. <clears throat> he said, guys, follow me. We follow Muhammad. And then we go there. And then he says, stay inside the circle. Don't leave the circle. Okay, Prophet. And then Muhammad, he walked, we don't know for how far. And now the genies start, those are supposed to be Africans, start riding him. Okay, I'm learning from you. Inshallah, your eyes will be open for the truth. Okay, Arif. What is the answer? Hmm. Another idiot. Look like you do not know that Allah is the one who blinded our eyes according to the Quran. You are an idiot like your prophet. You see those people, when, when they say things, I, I'm telling you, they didn't know their religion. Isn't it the Quran says that Allah is the one who blinded us? 
Allah who, who, who sealed our eyes and our hearing and our heart? I mean, can I find a smart Muslim once? Like, just for the sake of entertainment. So you ask Allah to open my heart and my eyes and etc. But the Quran says it is him who sealed it. Who is the stupid here? So based in your stupid prayer or wish, you are challenging Allah. Because Allah is the one who decides to do so. Do you see it? Stop using words that doesn't fit with your stupid cult. Allah does not open heart. Allah, he close hearts. Allah does not open eyes. Allah, he close eyes. Allah is the devil. The verse in the front of you. Are you going to say to me again, may Allah open your eyes, you idiot? And actually, if you read this verse, you will see how stupid this verse is. Because if Allah is the one who sealed their heart, so what the problem? The problem is Allah. <laughs> Look, another stupid thing. May Allah guide you. You stupid idiot. Don't you know that it says that Allah is the one who misguide and how you can misguide how you can guide the one who is guided by Allah. I'm telling you, those Muslims are potatoes. They don't know the religion. I never saw a Muslim he knew what he's talking about. Look at this. Allah guided whom he wills, and he will guide you too, stupid. No. Allah, he says, he misguide who he will. <laughs> and he said, the one who Allah misguide, nobody can guide. <laughs> and even Allah, he scream at Muhammad, says, are you going to guide the one who Allah misguided? Huh? <laughs> You will never find a way. And by the way, here you dwell, mean deceive. Stupid religion. And look, what does this have to do with our topic? May Allah guide you. May Allah give you watermelon. May Allah, it's like a bunch of guys, you know, what I don't want to use the word guys, actually, it doesn't fit. Like, I don't know how to say it. I don't want to use sexual words. But uh, you look like, for me, like a man wearing a skirt and talking to me. What does this have to do with, my, may Allah guide you? May Allah, you know, Cool. Ho, ho, ho. This is what you do to Israel. You go in war, and then when the Israeli they go against you, you say, May Allah kill you. May Allah kill you. May Allah kill you. Uh, and then you claim victory after crying, asking the world to support you. Huh? And you are the one who do the aggression. Playing victims. You spend the day cursing people. Now what is the answer? Why the why the genie are writing your prophet? I want to know why your prophet being abused by African, according to the story, and why those genie are African genie. I mean, can they be white genies? No, they cannot, because according to the cult of Muhammad, which is very racist, black color presents something evil. This is why Muhammad, he said all kind of crazy stuff, not only the one who would destroy the Kaaba as an Ethiopian, the most person Allah he hate is a black man. Not only that, Muhammad, he says, even animals who they are black should be killed. If we ask Muslims, why the black dog is the devil? This is a prophet of God. Okay, why the black dog is the devil? What the Muslim, they will say to me, repent, Christian prince, repent. Okay, uh, someone else, may Allah kill you. Okay, different uh, answer. You, uh, this is a female. Christian prince, you are stupid, okay? Okay, no problem. No wonder Ibn Battuta, he says that he visited a nation and he found the women there, they have one breast. This is your great histo historian, Ibn Battuta. And the Muslims are so proud about him. He found a nation, the whole nation, the women have only one breast. She was a bee or, or an ant maybe. Uh, 
only few you lie about everything. And when we show them the reference, they, they go crazy. They curse me. They want to kill me. They, they Why are you upset? Is your prophet saying that? I want to know why the black dog is the devil. Why the genie who they draw in the top of your prophet's shoulder or uh, back, I don't want to use his bum, you know, you'd be upset more. It says, it says there, they, Yarkaboon, Rasulullah, Yarkaboon. You, you know, you, you go search what Yarkaboon. I can't find you actually what the word Yarkaboon mean. If you want, you would die right laughing. Here we go, Yarkaboon. I will go to the word Yarkab. Hmm? Yarkab me to write. Okay, here we go. Let us see. The word Yarka. <laughs> the one who writes. <laughs> so, why the black dog is the devil? Why those African, they are riding the prophet in his back? Why they treated him as a donkey? Where was Allah? What is the purpose of this story? What we learn from this story? Why Muhammad he went there? Do Muhammad knew that they will ride him? If he knew that is we make it more horrible, that's when Muhammad he like it. You know, there's a joke about uh, <clears throat> about a guy, you know, he is like, let us say from somewhere, you know. He like, he like boom boom. He's a man, but he like boom boom. He like to be a female. So he went to the jungle, they told him, he asked him, where I can find the lion? They said to him, oh, the lion who, if you don't, if you should, be careful, the lion, you want to kill him? They want to hunt? He said, yes. They said to him, be careful, this lion, if you miss him, he will give you one of two choices. He said, what? He said, uh, you do not hear about it? He said, no, I heard about it actually, but I wanted to confirm. They said, if you miss shooting him, he will give you one of two choices. Either he will ride you and do boom boom to you, you know what I'm talking about, or he will eat you. So this guy, he took with him a gun, have one bullet. He went to the jungle, he shot at the lion, he missed. The lion woke up, you know, he said, okay, either I do boom boom to you or I will eat you. Which one? The guy, he said, boom boom. Second day, he came with two bullets, etc. Boom boom, he missed. Third day he came with three bullets, 20 bullets, 30 bullets. So like the last day he came with the clash and cough and he have 30 bullets in the magazine. And all of them they miss. I mean, impossible, man. So the, the, the lion, he was so upset. He said, what's wrong with you? Are you coming here to kill me or to get boom, boom? Well, obviously here the, the prophet is coming to be right by those because he knew. I mean, why he came here? Anyone want to tell me? He told Ibn Mas'ud, but stay between the, the lines so you don't get hurt, you know, hurt. So he knew if he passed that line, something would happen, right? Okay, and what will happen? Those genie, they will ride him. So why Muhammad is coming there? Any Muslim? Is he the same as the guy who came to the lion? He knew what will happen exactly, and he was looking for that. So I challenge all of you to tell me what is behind this story. You see, I don't want to say Muhammad is a liar. That will offend you, right? And you Muslims, by the way, the Muslims don't get offended very easy. I mean, they are very patient. And you know, like, they are very tolerant religion. They only get offended by pork, cross, music, electricity dancing, women, uh, donkeys, uh, pigs, uh, churches, uh, uh, art, paint. Uh, I mean, they have just a, some phobia, not a lot of phobia, you know? Little, 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 little tiny. So any Muslim want to tell me what is the purpose of this story? What we learn from this story? Muhammad is coming to give them the Quran. So this is how they receive the Quran by writing him. Aren't you Muslim you say that when someone hears the Quran, he got relaxed. 
you know, I see like some Western, they say to you when I hear the Quran, it's really nice. Because you don't understand. Otherwise, if you read the Quran, you see how stupid it is. Actually, one of you, he asked me a question about uh, the, the Muslim, they curse the Christians and the Jews uh, five times a day. Uh, he said, where? If you go to chapter of Al-Fatiha, you see the Muslim, they, they sing this uh, Quran for you every day, five times a day. Right? But they are cursing you. No. It says here, verse number seven, Show us the straight way, okay? The way of those whom you uh, hast, which would their grace, and those who uh, portion is not worth. And what kind of translation is that? Hold on. Chip it, Yosef Ali. I think he's using Google Translation. Let us see it somewhere else. All right. Let us see different idiot. Okay. Ah, look here. This is different. Hmm. So show us the straight way, uh, th like those who bestowed their grace on them, not the way of those who earn your anger. Those are the Jews. The translation is false. It's not earn your anger. It says al maghdubu alayhim, which means the cursed one, and not those who they are lost. Those are the Christians. So a Muslim, when he pray to Allah five times a day, he is speaking against you. He says, if you are a Christian, you are the lost. If you are a Muslim, you are the cursed. Five times a day. This is chapter 1, verse number 7. And you know here, uh, Muhammad obviously trying to make a prayer like our Father out of heaven. You know, which is nothing new for Muhammad. Actually, Muhammad, he stole the, the, the prayer of our Father out of heaven. But maybe we should make a video about it in different uh, different video. So now, do we have any Muslim want to say something? Anyone? And you know, don't take me wrong. I'm so happy for this result that Muhammad is the first prophet ever in history who been treated like a donkey. And those who receive Quran, they ride him. I mean, can you imagine how much relaxed they are to the point they were jumping like crazy all day long in the top of his back and what Muhammad doing is reciting Quran and why those things never happen to any human being except Muhammad any Muhammad have an idea I mean there's many prophets according to Islam there's 124,000 prophets only Muhammad the genie did that to him why I mean, were the genie confused? Maybe they thought he's a donkey. Maybe he looked like one. Why those genie did that? You know, when Jesus, he met with the person who have a demon, or he met with the, let's say, the animals, you know, like a, a person have a demon, and then the demon left the person and jumped in the, to the pigs, right? In the story. You know, they did not try Jesus. They were terrified of Jesus. Here is the opposite. Muhammad is terrified of them. And he came back with pain. Pain from what exactly? What they did? Is that because they are heavy? And here Muslims, how heavy is the genie? And how, how the genie is invisible? And then suddenly he is visible. And how genie is invisible? And he eat poo-poo and he eat uh, the dunk and he eat bones. I mean, what, what this religion is about? This is like a, a, a Alibaba, Sindibad, is what they call him in English? Sin, Sindibad? Sinbad? Sinbad? This is the stories of your religion. Yeah, Arif, take a hike. Your your comment is kind of like yours. I think you are drinking black label, right? Aren't you? You remind me of the Muslim women. They cut they cut her in the in the Hajj in the Saudi airport. They found with her black label. She's very old. The police said to her, "Aren't you ashamed? Aren't you ashamed to drink with you black label whiskey? Huh? Whiskey to the Hajj? Huh? 
the old woman, uh, she said, my son, I'm very old and I cannot go around the Kaaba. So if I drink black label, the Kaaba will go around me. This is true. You know, I mean, <clears throat> black label would do it. Actually, the, the friend of, uh, what his name? Uh, Mirza Ghulam, the one who claimed to be the Messiah, his friend, he claimed that when he go to the Kaaba, the Kaaba go around him. This guy, he sell hashish, you know, hashash. Yeah. He said that when he go to the Kaaba, he's different because he's a friend of uh, Mirza Ghulam, supposedly. So when he go to the Kaaba, the Kaaba, he don't go around the Kaaba, the Kaaba go around him. Makes sense. All those stories make sense only for Muslims. If you're the Muslim, nothing makes sense for you. But the second you are a Muslim, anything makes sense. Like it makes sense that Allah will make your penis endless. Yeah, because Allah, has, he have a shop for penises there. I mean, Allah, he have nothing to do. He's God supposed to, right? Yeah, but this God, he is very sexual. So he have a big, because have to be big if the penis is endless. <laughs> you know, imagine you have a shop is five meter wide and then the penis coming out. <laughs> you cannot do that. You know, you cannot do that. So a shop for making penises and those penises are endless. A shop for making vagina and the vagina fit for the endless penis, which means endless vagina. A shop for making the women butt one mile. By the way, one mile butt is a good size. But why not 72 mile? I mean, the bigger is better. <laughs> anything in Islam makes sense. Anything, anything. It's a Christian, it doesn't make sense. If your father, son, you son, like what? Like what? What kind of logic you have, huh? Like there's God and father and son? <laughs> Islam is religion of uh, uh, reasoning and makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like, come on. <laughs> Islam, all of it makes sense. I mean, from the beginning to the end. Like, <laughs> even the Muslim, they have a chapter in the Quran. It's called the chapter of the genie. Like, what? The chapter of what? <laughs> Let us go to chapter 72. <clears throat> genie huh oh boy the jinn look at this the jinn قُلْ أَوْحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِنَ الْجِنِّ like what like look, 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 look at this story look at this story look at the stupidity of this verse Allah said to Muhammad say to them I like that you know like Allah تَرَنْ تَرَنْ hey Muhammad Okay, I'm listening. Tell them. Okay, I will tell them. Now, say, it has been revealed to me that a company of jinn listen to the Quran and they said, we have really heard wonderful recital. Is that why they were writing him? So, in Islamic makes sense religion. If you like somebody reciting something, you jump in the top of his back and you humiliate the person all day long. And the other person who was watching, he says, I was terrified and they are naked wearing no clothes and they are black tall men. Those are the genie. And then those genie became Muslims. Look at this. It gives us guidance to the right of the genie that speak Arabic. They are Arab. See, I have cousins, they are genie, I don't know. I just discovered that. As you know, I'm an Arab and my, my, my cousins are genie. I feel sorry if you're Indonesian. There's no genie uh, uh, Indonesian. <laughs> the proof they speak Arabic, as you see. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Amar Rabbi Amar. What the heck is this? And then, and the, <coughs> the exalted is majesty. He have no children. They are the ones saying that. Oh, Allah is saying that. What is this? What does this have to do with the genie now? And then, and uh, and there were some foolish ones among us, among us, among the genie. There's some genie that don't believe in Allah. <laughs> Atheist genie. <laughs> he believe in Darwin. <laughs> 
I would like to see a genie explain to me how he became a genie according to Darwin theory. <laughs> you, uh, genie, you are invisible. What do you, what do you think? Uh, that can be explained by the video about Shaitan. He fought and Shaitan played with your anus. And if you say to him a prayer, you will become invisible. What is that? How is that? And look at this guy. How we can contact this Christian prince? This, my friend, somebody told you I'm a TV or a phone. <laughs> you want to contact this? <laughs> take, take a height. Okay. <clears throat> How we can contact this Christian prince? Do you really going to contact me? He will go. Allah, he is, Allah will contact you. He will go Allah. And the funny is that. Muhammad did not hear the genie because the verse says that Allah said to Muhammad it had been revealed to me that a company of the jinn listened to the Quran so Muhammad did he see them or not the hadith he said yes we saw them I show you the hadith about the, the, the poo poo <clears throat> you forgot and he spoke to them And you can read even the interpretation. <coughs> Any Muslim have anything you want to say? Anyone? And how the genie are made from fire and then they are writing the prophet. This is a Muslim website. <coughs> Sorry, I I have the fan on and that will make some uh, dust. <coughs> I have allergy. So, let us see. Hadith the Prophet about genie. The genie are created, the angel created from light, the genie created from fire. Okay. Uh, what are the quality of the jinn? The jinn have many different qualities and capabilities from a human, including the following. Quranic verses and frequent hadith so that jinn can form in different form. <laughs> can form what? In different form. <laughs> hey, Abdul, as long as the genie, they can form in different form. They can come as a man. They can come as an angel. This is what happened to Muhammad. An angel, a genie, a shaitan, came to him and he was in the image of Jibreel. So now how we can trust that Muhammad himself is not a genie? If you remember the story of Muhammad that a genie, shaitan, he came to the wife of Suleiman and he made himself look like Suleiman so he can look like a perfect person. He can look as an angel, he can look like a man, he can look like a donkey, he can look like a horse, he can look whatever he wants. So how we knew that Muhammad was not seeing a genie anyway? And how we know that Muhammad himself is not a genie? <clears throat> and not to forget that genie can have sex with Muslim women. And genie women can have sex with Muslim men. If you search right now, uh, in Google, uh, search for like uh, uh, sex with genie, you know, you can do that. Just be sure you are over the age of 18. <laughs> Islam makes sense, brother. I mean, we have, we have to, <coughs> we have to admit that this is a, a fantastic religion. Uh, Fatwa, someone told him a jinn had sex with you. Look at the topic. This is what keeps more Muslim busy. Hamas and jinn having sex with a, a Muslim or Muslim girl. If you remember in my book, if you have my book, one of my books, Sex and Allah, you will find that a Muslim man, he opened the door on his wife and he found 
fire in her bushes, you know, in the pubic area around her vagina. The explanation for this brother, that she was having sex with a genie. I mean, think about it. You open the door on your wife, and she is in the bed, and she is naked, and her, <clears throat> you know, open, and then there's fire in her bushes. How the fire happened? Because she was having sex with the genie. Remember, the genie are made from fire. <laughs> Look at this guy saying, I challenge you to prove Islam is wrong. After all what we said, you are making this challenge, you idiot. <laughs> Guys, look at this challenge. Christian Prince, Christian Prince, listen to me, Christian Prince. I trained you. I trained you to prove to me Islam is wrong. After all what I said, I did not prove it yet. <laughs> I don't know what kind of hashish you are using, but for sure is a cheated hashish, my friend. <laughs> It's very heavy duty hashish. <laughs> One of the um, uh, uh, Amil, an expert treating black magic, told me that one of the jinn is having sex with me for the last two years. Is this is possible? If yes, what is the proper cure according to the Quran and the Sunnah? <laughs> No wonder these days there's no versions no more. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to die from laughing. Oh boy. And the other guy, he says to me, prove Islam wrong. Okay, I challenge you. Huh? <clears throat> The scholar, look, look, look at the answer. This is the answer, supposedly. The answer, the answer will make you more confused than the question. The scholar differed in the opinion and regarded the possibility of a human having sex, sexual intercourse with the genie. They differ. <laughs> A very regular answer. Muslims, they differ about everything. The only agreement, we agree about not to agree about what this verse means. <laughs> this is the only agreement they have in their history. Even when they want to fight Israel, we agree about not to agree about how to fight Israel. And we agree not to agree about how to have peace or not to have peace. And we agree with not to agree about who is the one should be fight first. The Christians or the Jews or the Hindus or the Buddhists or the atheists or the Kings or the Spiritists or something like that. And don't forget to wage war on the lizard, which is making sense. And the guy, where is the guy who says to me, prove or slam wrong? <clears throat> oh boy. I'm really, really convinced that this is a religion of truth. I don't know. If there's anyone of you here live in Arizona, if there's anyone of you here live in Arizona, please do me a favor. Make a videos of a chasing lizard and shooting them. They are the enemy of Allah. Brother, this is a true story. When they tried to burn Abraham, all the animals from the jungle, they came to put down the fire, <laughs> except one lizard and his tribe, lizards. They came and they were blowing wind. And here in the Hadith translation, this is Geigo. Not the insurance. <laughs> the Geigo, he blow up at the fire to stir it up. What an ugly, disgusting creature, criminal. The enemy of Allah. I mean, my friend, Prophet Muhammad, he knew it all. He knew the enemy of, look at him. I mean, look at him. Don't he look dangerous? 
I mean, we have to face it. This is the guy who was launching a war on Abraham. Look, look, Abraham was not worried about the people, you know, following him, chasing him. They want to kill him. No, no, friend. He can't overcome all of those. But this guy, this guy was the biggest threat to Allah. And this is why he's number one enemy to Allah. And even the Prophet, he says, if you kill him from first shot, Allah will give you etc. etc. reward. If you kill him from the second shot, Allah will give you like half reward. If you kill him from the third shot, <laughs> look at this man. I mean, think about it. I mean, think. Uh, did I say think about it? I'm not talking to you, Muslims. That will hurt you. Don't think, please. The second you think, you will leave Islam. Don't do that. The Prophet, he ordered me to kill the guy goes. Like, what the heck? Why Muhammad is... Okay, we heard that jihad against the Kuffar. We heard jihad against the Jews, against the Buddhas, against the atheists. But against the guy go? Look, look, look how many... Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. The Messenger of Allah, he said, if someone, if any of you kill the guy, go from the first blow, a hundred good deed will be recorded. Like, you know, like you shoot, and Allah, he would, uh, a Bitcoin in your account, like Bitcoin, you know, bit, Bitcoin, 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 a hundred deed, brother. Brother, uh, let us go, Zach and I. Christian Prince, first of all, show me your name and tell me your faith. Zach and Nag, it is show me your face, tell me your name. What happened to you? Exactly. Because I'm very late here and it's going to be a long time. What do you want? Uh, uh, Zach and Nag, why if we shoot that guy go, Allah will give us a hundred reward. And if we shoot him from the second time, which means we would not kill him from the first time, Allah will give us like half. And if we kill him, the third one will give us the less. Why? Great and breath. Prophet of Allah, he have a video on the deck. What? what? Uh, okay, let that one go. I, I do not need translator. Anyway, I'm very good in Urdu. I will speak in Urdu. I'm a big in English. Uh, okay, no problem. It's English. No problem. So what is the reason behind the gig, the guy go war? Great and breath. When I was a kid, I used to watch cartoon, and all the cartoon make no sense. But when I grew up and became an adult, I saw the most beautiful cartoon, Prophet of Allah. He taught us a bit cartoon. So you are saying, agree, this is a cartoon. In a very respectable way. This is Allah Prophet is telling us stories from the past, which nobody can see. Nobody can see, exactly. But we can see that guy go, I mean, he's so small. And how does guy go when I kill Abraham? Christian breath. First of all, Nobody can kill Abraham, and nobody can kill Isa, and nobody can kill, uh, don't say Muhammad, because the hadith says that a woman, she bought a poison from Home Depot, and she killed him. Christian Prince, I'm going to get you busted. I threatened you to throw me in the hadith that said Home Depot. Uh, what? Uh, I threatened you to throw me in the hadith that said Home Depot. Uh, okay, very so. See, President Sister. Christian Prince is adding words to the Hadith. The Hadith does not say Home Depot. It said that the Jewish women, he killed the guy, they killed the Prophet by poison. He added Home Depot. And this is why Allah, he said that those Christians, they corrupt the Bible. I was joking, I can I what Home Depot? There was no Home Depot at that time. Exactly. So why are you saying Home Depot when there was no Home Depot? And I get you busted. And this is recorded, I'm going to publish it on the internet. Okay, publish it. Okay, say again, Home Depot. Okay, okay, let me. Actually, I will make it to you, Photoshop, too. The Prophet, in his element, which he died, he used to say, Oh, Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as my orta is being cut off from that poison. And now, let us do this. Correct the hadith, brother. Hmm? From... Oh, type in Arabic. Here we go. Now you have it recorded and you have it documented. Christian Prince, thank you very much. I'm going to make a conference. 
I'm going to speak to the president. I'm going to speak to the minister. And I'm going to make a case against you in America. Because you are corrupting the books. And you are a liar. And we got you busted. Everybody can see with me. He added the word Home Depot and there is no Home Depot. How you can trust him? How you can listen to him? And how somebody leaves Islam because of him? Uh, Zach and Naik, uh, anything else? What happened to the guy go now? We, like, we changed the story. So why? why? <laughs> Christian Prince, first of all, Alhamdulillah, in Pakistan, we don't have guy go. We killed them all. Yeah, they protect the nature there. That's it. We killed the guy go. But we have a problem. What is the problem? A lot of mosquitoes. Ah, because you killed the guy go. And we have a problem. What is that? We have cockroaches. You have cockroaches? Exactly. And we have a problem. What? We have a lot of insects eating our food. Yeah, because you killed the guy go. Phil, we will kill the guy go. And we will fight against the guy go. Allah, what about the beer guy go? Zakanayak, are you going to call the coming war guy go war? Zakir, are you there? Is Zakir, what happened? The Christian press, I just remember. One of the benefits of killing the guy go. If you are snoring and your mouth is open, there's no guy go can go inside your mouth because we killed them all. I get you busted. Don't call me again. Thank you. What the heck? This is the benefit of killing guy go? Your mouth is open and no guy go will go inside your mouth? I never thought about it until now. Genius. So, my friends. <clears throat> You Christians, you believe in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, doesn't make sense. Your religion is stupid. One plus one plus one is equal to one? You idiot? Like, what? <laughs> the Muslims, they want to design God as they want. They don't like it. They don't like God to have a son. They want to change that. <laughs> so what they do, they design God as they wish. But Allah have a shin, it's okay. Allah have five fingers, it's okay. Allah, he sit in the chair, he's so heavy. Angels cannot carry him, it's okay. Allah, he changed his shape, it's okay. Allah, he come as a shaitan, it's okay. Allah is so ugly, but he's so beautiful, it's okay. Allah have a mouth, Allah have ears, Allah have eyes, Allah have, uh, it's okay, and then Allah will show his shin, so beautiful shin. We can't wait for that day. The day we will see the shin of Allah. And brother, we live all our life to see what? The shin. The shin. And not to forget, today is what? Today is Thursday, tomorrow is a Friday. Anyone remember what will happen tomorrow? Anyone remember? Well, let me take off this Home Depot. The Muslims, they will take a screenshot and they will, they will get me busted with it. What I did, I think because I'm drinking too much coffee, I wasn't aware of what I'm doing. They will take a screenshot now and they will prove that I'm lying. I should not give Zakir Naik such a powerful tool against me. So, <clears throat> do you know what, I, what, uh, what tomorrow will happen? Anyone remember? Well, according to Muhammad, tomorrow, every Friday, every, every Friday, <laughs> Allah will send you a card, a card, the angel come to your door, you open the door, he will give you a card, and the card says, my servant, I miss you. You miss me Allah? Yes, I miss you. You are invited. And then every Friday, you receive the same card and you go to the party. And then in the party, there are three singers. Singer number one, anyone remember? Who is singer number one? Who is singer number one? The one who give me the answer about singer number one, I will make you an admin when the room, when the chat is closed. Anyone remember who is singer number one? Nobody remember. Most people are getting old. I'm the only young here. Who is singer number one? The, the one who will sing first in the, the party. Huh? David. David is singing. And then singer number two, Muhammad. And then singer number three, Allah. Like what the heck? For eternity, every Friday, three sing for us. David, Muhammad, and Allah. And they sing the same song for eternity. And each time they sing it, they ask us, have you ever heard better than this? We heard it last week and you say, no, brother Allah. No way. For eternity, every Friday, 
I mean, you never heard of YouTube. You never heard of Atari. Like, come on, give us, like, get us different three singers for eternity. And by the way, if you don't believe me, you can search for, like, what is that? Oh, look what, look. I open YouTube and look what it says. Make short, make shit on fart. Like, what? Like, what? I didn't want to go there now. Make shit on fart. Don't go there. Okay, if you want to download the video about Shaitan Fart, download it from here so you can spread it around. Very important video. Makes sense. It makes sense. A lot of sense. <clears throat> Once I wanted to say it makes sense, I said it makes sex. <laughs> Shaitan, he put words in my mouth, brother. Like what happened to Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> oh boy. So, uh, if you go to video, it's called the description. of paradise yeah this video brother if you watch it once I played this I was doing a seminar and <clears throat> I have I don't know like how many the 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 space is real it's like it's, it's a it was a usually they use like a, a, you know a stadium stadium for basketball it's full there's no place even the doors are backed up I played this video people People, they collapse from laughing. People, they die laughing, especially with my comment. You know, my comment is very... <laughs> I hate my comments. <laughs> so, brother, if you watch this video, you will love it. You will love it. Because it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. So, every Friday, Allah will send you a card, brother. And he will invite you, brother, to the party, brother. Yes, brother. And then, let me tell you, brother. Nobody can describe the heaven for you, brother. I will make you here more beautiful, more than that. Listen, Allah Azza wa Jal telling Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Stand up, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Recite to them Surah Taha. How much we love the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa How much we follow the steps of Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How much we dream about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How much we read about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, he's in front of you. Now, he's reciting Surah Taha. Allah Azza wa Jal will tell you and tell you all of us, my servant, ya ibadi, have you ever heard beautiful more than that? Say, Ya Rabbi, wa izzataka wa jalalak. By your glory and your power, we never heard the beautiful more than that. Every, every Friday, they will ask you the same question. Have you ever heard better than the singing of Muhammad? And you say, we never heard. But you just heard him say last week. Beautiful, brother. Every Friday, Allah will send you a card. Every Friday, brothers, sisters, Islam is the only reason it makes sense. Every Friday, we have a special entertainment for you. The angel will come to you and will give you a card. It's like the Prophet Adam, السلام. so we will completely be different, very handsome, very beautiful. We're gonna our clothes. It's not going to be wrinkled. Our hair... You know what? I was worried about this, that my clothes will be wrinkled. I mean, come on, I'm going to heaven, and now I'm wearing clothes I will be wrinkled. <laughs> anyway, we better stop here, otherwise we will die laughing, and somebody will sue me for a heart attack. But watch it and die laughing. But <clears throat> I have some videos about it, and I have my commentary if you want to really watch it, so you can see what we are talking about. My friends, Islam is very stupid cult. All the stories is, is a religion of superstition, fictions. It's made by a dummy for the dummies. And the funny you will see a Muslim saying to me, can you prove Islam is wrong for me? I mean, the prophet himself saying that a bunch of black people, they rode up, you know, upon his back and they are genie. And one after one, they keep jumping over his back all day long. 
And this is supposedly those are genie who he recite the Quran for them. And you will notice here that Muhammad is very racist. He's trying to say that the black people are not civil. When they see Muhammad, they jump on, on him. They treated him as a donkey. Otherwise, I challenge any Muslim to tell me what is behind this. Why they are jumping on him and why he chose a black color for a black African for a genie who they are doing bad supposedly to him. And a Muslim can tell us. And actually, if you read the rest of the story, If you read the rest of the story, <clears throat> you will see a genies with white colors appearing. And those are the good ones. So Muhammad always, he tried to make it in his own way as a racist person who claimed that the black dog is the devil. Three things interrupt the prayer. Muhammad, he ordered even to kill every pure black animal. The most person Allah he hate according to Muhammad is a black man. And the Quran says it clearly that in the day of resurrection, Allah will make all the Muslims white and all non-Muslims black. And this is mentioned many times in the Quran. And this is not metaphorically. You can go and read the Hadith and you can read the interpretation you will see that there is a story about a beast is called a Jassasa is going to come if you read the chapter 27 verse number 82 and you read the interpretation of Ibrika theory if you wish you will see that this beast which is a real physical beast and is going to have the stick of Musa's and the ring of Solomon is going to hit the non-believer in his nose and he's going to be black and is going to hit the believer in his uh, uh, forehead and he is going to turn to be white he will turn very white not like just white extremely white this is the cult of muhammad and today we introduce to you some of it uh, <clears throat> well we just showed you the story of uh, the ethiopian guy the ethiopian guy he is a black person who destroyed the Kaaba he's the he's, he's the shaitan supposedly you know <clears throat> anyway thank you very much for being here may the Lord bless you uh, download the video share it with your friends we are not going to keep it uh, we don't I don't keep my videos on my channel as you know and don't forget to subscribe and we want to say thank you for those who support us by doing nothing <laughs> You know, I'm say, I say things in the opposite, right? I'm being sarcastic because now the Muslim, they will say that the Christian prince speak like, try to speak like Muhammad, make no sense. <laughs> because when you speak no sense, you speak up, you're claiming to profit. So thank you for those who support us by doing nothing. Anything. They don't download the videos. They don't translate the videos. And they don't pause the videos and don't tell their friends about our videos and they don't even help us in donation thank you very much for not doing that i appreciate you so thank you all you know people they love always to do nothing that is the best in their life i am the opposite i do i am here to fight the cult any cult for nothing is dangerous more than cults and you will find one thing all cult leaders they want your money and your women all of them they share one thing all of them no exception they want to sleep with your women and they want your money and muhammad proved both in extreme matter even to the point he made verses in the quran saying that any woman she want to give herself to the prophet as a gift muslims they can have only four women muhammad can have unlimited muslims they have to pay dowry to the women Muhammad, he can have women without paying anything. Muslims, they have limitation in every sexual aspect except the Prophet. He have no limitation. This is what Muhammad is about. Crazy person.
sick person, a prophet of the dummies. You have to be a dummy to believe that there is a God. All that he care for is the penis of his prophet. To the point even he sent him a dish of shish kebab, he ate it and he got the power of 40 men. A man who speak too much about his sexual power. He is a prophet of God for sure. And he cannot be a prophet of God unless he can do boom boom of as 40 men. If it's 39, that will not qualify him. You are not fit. This is the qualification of the God of Islam. Size does matter. Sex does matter. How many times does matter? But quality of ethic does not matter. Quality of religion does not matter. How good you are does not matter. All what it matter how much stories you can tell and those stories who dare to, to question them. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is a joke made by a dummy for the dummies. Are you a dummy? That is a question you answer. Take care. Bye-bye.